good. I'm very much hoping that you stay on. Oh, two different styles of recording, but still, that's what we're dealing with. <sighs> Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Good turn in circle, obviously, because it's a supermotor. There is no way I can tell if that camera's still on. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried about it. So we've got 7.2 battery in this one on what is essentially a lighter bike. It will have more wind resistance, but you can only imagine that it will give me slightly better range than a bike that weighs more. Hello old school. This is definitely faster than the S model. Well isn't this a break for you? You were made, I'm gonna guess in California. Certainly you were designed there. Oh, where am I going? Who's gonna ride me? I wonder. And here you are in glamorous London on a grey rainy day. You hit the big time, my friend. You hit the big time. Yeah. I feel like Brian Blessed making my own sound effects. Pew, 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 pew. Sit rep, 85%. It's doing alright actually, this one doesn't concern me. This one will get me there and home. Oh, I can still see the camera. Thank fuck for that. It's facing the wrong way though. It's facing the sky. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Ugh. Shit. Don't worry, I've still got it. Luckily it came off somewhere that I could actually go and retrieve it, which was the most important thing. Mm. And the other lucky thing is actually that the action case performed brilliantly. Kept my camera nice and pristine inside this. Obviously a few scuff marks on the outer casing of the lens, but not actually over the lens itself. So you know, every cloud is a silver lining. And there were lots of clouds, so I'll take your pick. Right, let's formally introduce the bike. So. We're going to call this Electric Vehicle Week because actually earlier in the week I tested the BMW C Evolution and then I got the chance to take a ride on the Zero S and the Zero FXS. The FXS is a supermoto style motorbike made for quick urban commuting and for a little bit of off-road as well. It certainly feels a little peppier than the S model and most of that comes from the fact that, of course, this is lighter. It has less horsepower, but it's got the same torque when coupled with the 7.2 battery pack that both of them have had today. Neither of them inspire a huge amount of confidence for me with traction, though. It could be down to the tyres, or it could be down to just the way that it handles. One of the first things I should mention is the price. It is £8,990 in the UK, starting at least. And I know that because they gave me a brochure. They don't just give these to anyone. If you're not in the store, if you're in the store, then you... Yeah, they're free. They're free. For proportions, again, like I say, it stacks up well against its Supermoto rivals. It's 836mm, relatively tall, but a thin seat. Not too uncomfortable to be on, actually, for about an hour or so. Perfectly adequate for commuting. It has shower suspension front and back, and that is adjustable for preload, compression, and rebound damping. For the brakes, we have Jejuan pistons. Jejuan, yeah, I hadn't heard of them either. I looked them up, they are more off-road focused. So we have a dual piston front caliper, and a single piston rear. I would say that for a bike this light, the brakes felt adequate. I would probably want maybe a little bit more on the front. Two discs would be very helpful. There's also been a complaint leveled at zero, with this bike in particular, that the ABS kicks in a little bit too quickly on the rear. To me personally, it didn't frustrate me. It seemed to kick in exactly as the rear tire was losing traction, but I understand where people are coming from on this point. Yeah, it does cut in a bit early. You can't lock up the rear. Which is good for most bikes. For the type of person who would be buying this, Probably not what they're looking for. They'd probably, so I'm told, enjoy the option of being able to lock up the rear wheel. Now, although this is an electric bike and usually that carries quite a lot of weight, it only comes in at 133 kilograms. That is reasonably light. It actually felt quite light to manoeuvre as well. Not really stiff, but it's certainly stiffer than 
a traditional bike, a petrol power. Here's the thing about electric vehicles. They're known for torque, they're known for power and acceleration, they are not known for their handling, and there's a reason for it. It's the weight, and the way that they place that weight. It's a double-edged sword because it makes them super stable for stuff like this, where you go through traffic at low speeds, which is lovely, but it means it's got a lot of weight to carry around the corner in a weird place, in a weird spot. Being electric, of course, it doesn't have any gears, which means that it's clutchless, which means that your left hand has nothing to do. Even so, I would quite like to give my left hand a job. I'll be more specific with that. Basically, on the right hand side you have the modes, so you have eco and sport. Now the problem is that because there's no clutch, you can't clutch in and take your hand off the right. You need to keep your hand in contact with it. So it's a bit of a faff pressing that mode button with your right hand. I would say that it would be better served if it was on the left. I know you've got your information button over there, but there is literally nothing for your left hand to do but hold on. Then of course we come to the battery, and as I've already mentioned, it is a 7.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. If that sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you're watching this on something that uses a lithium ion battery, I would assume. Because they're highly in demand, of course, they are quite expensive. The materials used to make them are not depleting so much as just the demand is rising exponentially because of electric vehicles and lots and lots of electric equipment as well. That is what drives up the price. And it's interesting to note that these things come with a five year warranty. And when they say five years, what they mean is at the end of five years, it will retain at least 75% of its original charge. Something else to just be aware of is that I asked BMW, not zero, but with BMW to change their batteries on their C Evolution electric scooter, it actually costs you 4,000 pounds. Whoo, that is not cheap. That is practically an engine build or a new engine every possibly five years, you know, worst case scenario, maybe seven, it might give you more, they just don't know. But it's not a risk I'm willing to take as far as a return when I lose value on the bike in years to come. Now the biggest point with an electric vehicle, and I know this because I saw a few people on the day, and I spoke to a few people after the review, and every single one of them asked the same question. What is the range? Basically in a city, they claim that it will give you 100 miles to a full charge. On a motorway, they claim 39 miles. I actually tested it on mine and I did 26 miles. I finished my ride with 54% and I did both. Well, not really motorway, but I was going between 30 and 50 miles an hour. That brings it in line with their predictions. They're fairly accurate actually with what they say it will get. Is that enough range? Well, that's up to you. Depends where you're riding, how you're gonna be riding it. If you live within 25 miles of some decent roads, then great. If you don't, well, you better start getting used to the roads that are around your house. I wonder if anyone asks me a question about this. Of the three people that are here on such a miserable day. All right. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I know the neighbours. Decent, right? How far did you get on it, though? Allegedly, well, under 100 miles, put it that way, 99. Yeah, it won't be. It's less than that. Do you know, I don't think they were impressed. Intrigued? Sure. Impressed? I don't reckon they were. Now, for the charge, when you do finally run out of juice, Apparently it takes 9.7 hours to charge it fully. You can do a quick charge in 1.8 hours, but on a domestic power supply at your very own home, even with the quick charge that you can apply to this thing, the lowest you will get it down to is between 4.1 and 4.8 hours. Then we get on to torque and power. We're talking torque and power. Now as a baseline, this obviously only gets the 7.2 kilowatt hour battery. So it is talking about 44 brake horsepower, not too exceptional, but not bad for a bike of this size and weight. It's really when we talk about torque, God, there is no other way of saying that, that we get impressed, hopefully. It's got 106 Newton meters. That's about 78 foot pounds of torque from a standing start. It practically makes that from zero. Just to put that in context, that is more torque than a Harley 1200 Sportster, which is insane. And I'm about to beat off a half dozen Uber drivers. Shoof. And that was pretty much a wide crack throttle on eco mode. Same story as the S. Sets off stable. It feels like they tried to replicate regular petrol powered engine braking. 
it was pretty close. Obviously being an electric vehicle, this thing has no engine noise. And I know some of you will be ahead of me on this one. I missed not having an exhaust note on this bike. And I also know that that will polarize some of you. Hear me out. For my money, other road users, well, including us on bikes, you predominantly use two sensors. You use sight and you use sound. Having some kind of noise means that people can hear you. And people aren't yet calibrated to not having that noise. Welcome to London traffic, everybody. Let me take you through a lesson. Now, if I was on my Virago, I reckon that Toyota Prius would be moving over right now, that Ford Focus would be moving over about now. People hear me at least four cars away, which is great because even if they don't move over, at least they've heard me, they know I'm there. Wow, what? What is going on there? It's a bold choice. So when you're straight behind them, if they can see you in the mirror, then they'll move away. That's fine. But there is something to be said for people hearing you. If they hear you, they know you're there. If they know you're there, they'll probably have seen you. And they'll be aware, hopefully, not to change lanes without looking or thinking. You need everything on your side to make sure you are safe. You need to ride safe, you need to be highly visible, and you need to be heard. With that said, please unload all your comments down, down in the comment section there. I expect them, I want them. So if I just tell you that an electric vehicle is talky and it's powerful and it's smooth, it's nothing you won't have heard before and it doesn't really get the point across. One of the best and most effective ways of explaining this, if you've not ridden an electric vehicle before, is to explain a little bit about the difference between a petrol engine and an electric motor. Forgive me, I'm not gonna go too into depth because honestly, it would be out of my field of expertise but I do get the basics, and I'm sure a lot of you understand how petrol engines work as well. The fundamentals are this. You have a piston within a cylinder, and you have a connecting rod which moves down to the crankshaft. They're called four-stroke because they do four strokes. They go down, up, down, up. Now, they only really give you power on one of those strokes. An explosion happens within the cylinder. The piston, therefore, moves down. The connecting rod then transfers the power, and that is then transferred eventually to your rear wheel. A good example would be to think of a two-cylinder because you can relate that to maybe riding a bicycle, and it's a bit of an oversimplification, but as the piston moves down, think of that as your leg moving down on the pedal, and you get thrust only when you're pushing down. Manufacturers, therefore, have a variety of different options when trying to change the power output of a bike and the characteristics of that bike. They can choose to put in however many cylinders they want, they can make those cylinders however big they want, they can change the size and shape of that piston, they can change the size of that connecting rod. All of these different things go into giving a bike character and changing how it delivers all of that power to the rear wheel. Now with an electric motor on the other hand, what you have is a DC or direct current brushless electric motor and that works off of electricity and magnets. So there's a few different ways of doing that. You can have a fixed magnet in the center on the rotor, or you can have a fixed magnet around the outside. So if the fixed magnet is in the center, and you have electromagnets all the way around the outside, and you have quite a few of them, basically one of those electromagnets turns on. And that attracts the rotor in the center around just a little bit of a turn. Just a tiny amount. And when it gets around to the point where it would meet that magnet, it's then turned off. Then the next electromagnet is turned on. Then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, all the way around sequentially. And the rotor in the center just keeps spinning. Interestingly enough, in comparison to a petrol engine where you have to build up to your peak torque and your peak power, on an electric motor, it makes peak torque pretty much from the get-go. As soon as that magnet turns on, it gets that pull and it spins around. The only limitation there is what they decide to put on electronically, or however much torque it can actually transfer to that rear wheel without just spinning around. It also offers no kind of shake or actual feedback, so it is as smooth as it possibly can be. Now some would say, therefore, that an electric bike lacks any form of character. And to those people, I would simply say, try it. Because the very fact that it is smooth and quiet is its character. It's just a different character than you'll be used to, and it's a different character than you can get on any other bike out there. It won't be to everyone's taste, and that's fair enough. V-twins aren't to everyone's taste, four cylinders aren't to everyone's taste, single cylinders aren't to everyone's taste either. Personally, I enjoy all the bikes out there, all the configurations that you can get. The most important thing to me is to actually use them in the place that they are designed for. And that really brings us on to the most important point with this, where is its home? 
Where is this bike most comfortable? Well, it's focused at the city. It's focused on urban transport. It is fast, it is nimble, it is stable. The fact that you don't have a clutch is great when you're in a city. The fact that it's twist and go, but it has the kudos of being a bike rather than a scooter, that's exciting as well. That's appealing to me. It's also obviously capable of going off-road. Look at some of their press items. They've got people using this thing on jumps even. The only thing it lacks there is range, as we well know, and the fact that it takes a long time to charge. Now, would I buy this bike? Probably not at the moment. It's a bit of a shame. I would use this thing in a city, but I can't personally justify the money I could find cheaper in a petrol alternative. And they are still decent enough now. But this thing, it shows potential. They're not the only ones doing it, but they are at the moment one of the most commercially viable. 11.9, oh, 1 pound, 1 pound 19 per litre. Oh, it's not bad. It's not as good as free. Ha! <laughs> It ain't free. Now which one wins? BMW, Land Rover. It's got to be the BMW, right? Unless they're on the phone. Oh, 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 you've been mugged off, mate! <laughs> it was the Land Rover. This is my new favourite game in London, considering that on quite a few junctions you've got dual lane. Audi or BMW, place your bets now. Dun, 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 dun. I reckon the Audi is winning. What do I think? Oh, black that windows. Nah, it's the BMW. My money's on the BM. Yes, 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 yes. Fired off. Well done. It was an easy victory there for you, BM. Now, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you want to see my review of the Zero S or the BMW C Evolution, they will be coming out soon. Or if you like the content, feel free to subscribe down below and click the bell. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you again soon. Now I'm not saying they need to put in some boring artificial exhaust, no. What I'm saying they could do is not to limit themselves. Be experimental with it, be fun with it. What if, what if you had a selector wheel where you could choose your favorite exhaust sound? Oh, today I want to be a Panigale V4. Click. Kawasaki Ninja? Yeah, why not? Why limit yourself there? You can make it sound like a car. You can make it sound like a screaming goat. People choose celebrity sat-navs all the time. Why do they do that? Because it's fun. Are you telling me it wouldn't translate to sales if you could go down your selector wheel and choose Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman coming through. I'm trying to get home. Please don't kill me. No one wants to be the guy that killed Morgan Freeman. If you could select Christopher Walken for your bike, is that not fun? You, in the Prius, more cowbell please. I'm gonna beat you off this light. Your car hasn't got any balls. And so forth.